let's see the dangerous layer of this skull the dangerous layer of this skull is loose areolar connective tissue layer which is actually the fourth layer out of the five layers of the skull and this loose areolar connective tissue layer lies between the galea aponeurotica above and pericranium below when we see the description of the galea aponeurotica it is a aponeurotic sit situated between the frontal belly and the occipital belly the important thing to understand that this frontal belly of the fronto occipitalis muscle it is not going to attach over the bone so it do not have bony attachment while it is going to attach over the skin of the forehead and the eyelid so we can easily understand that the layer that is the loose areolar connective tissue layer situated just deep to that galea aponeurotica it extends up to the eyelid because the frontal belly do not have bony attachment so any blunt trauma to the skull that at that time the collection of the fluid or blood it may trickle down up to the eyelid and the fluid is collected around the ear mostly to the upper eyelid and that is called as the black eye and the other name is the raccoon's eye so this is the first reason why this loose areolar connective tissue layer is called as the dangerous layer the second reason why this loose areolar connective tissue layer is called as the dangerous layer is that this immissary vein it is situated within the loose areolar connective tissue layer and this immissary vein it is the connecting venous channel situated between the vein of the skull and the venous pool of blood which is situated intracranially and it is situated between the two layer of the dura mater and that venous pool of blood it is called as a dural venous sinus so the immissary vein is responsible for the communication between the superficial veins of scalp and the dural venous sinus this dural venous sinus are situated intracranially uh, this loose areolar connective tissue layer it is as the name suggests it is very loose and that's why the injury to the immissary vein is more common and when the injury to the immissary vein is there it may lead to the infection spread up to the dural venous sinus or if any infection situated over the connective tissue layer or in the upper part of the skull that may spread to the intracranial area through this immissary vein up to the dural venous sinus so this one is the second important reason why this loose areolar connective tissue layer is called as dangerous layer of the skull the third reason is that this loose areolar connective tissue layer it is poorly supplied by the blood so the injury to this loose areolar connective tissue layer it is less easily healed and the fourth reason why this loose areolar connective tissue layer is called as the dangerous layer of the skull is that the above three layers of the skull that is skin connective tissue layer and the galea aponeurotica these three layers are called as the surgical layers of the skull so in case of the avulsion of the skull it is most common at the time of the rotatory machinery when the lady with the open hair works with the rotatory machinery and if the hair stuck inside the rotatory machinery that will lead to the avulsion of the skull and this avulsion of the skull it occurs through this loose areolar connective tissue layer so the scalp may get avulsed by about three layers and only the skull cap having pericranium so this is the route through which the avulsion of the scalp is common and that's why this loose areolar connective tissue layer it is also called as the dangerous layer of the skull so these are the four reasons why loose areolar connective tissue layer is called as the dangerous layer of the skull this loose areolar connective tissue layer it is surgically also very much important layer because this this fourth layer of the skull it act as safety valve so let's see the detail of the safety valve suppose if the fracture of the bolt of the skull is there somewhere here and that fracture may injure the pericranium also and the endocranium layer also which that endocranial layer is the layer of the periosteum lining the inner aspect of the vault of the skull that may lead to the hemorrhage from the venous sinus 
through the root of this fracture, the blood may pass to the loose areolar connective tissue layer. So the blood which is trickled from the dural venous sinuses that passes through the line of the fracture and enter into the loose areolar connective tissue layer which spreads into the whole part of the skull. And that actually reduces the chances of the pressure of the brain tissue which is situated intracranially. So this loose areolar connective tissue layer acts as safety valve to reduce the pressure during intracranial hemorrhage. And the blood collected within this loose areolar connective tissue layer, it is called as the septi valve hematoma. One more clinical term, it is concerned with this loose areolar connective tissue layer. The term that is called as a caput succedanum. This caput succedanum is nothing but it is the edematous swelling of the scalp of the newborn baby. At the time of the delivery, if the venous return is hampered through this loose areolar connective tissue layer because of the pressure of the forceps or any instrumentation during delivery that will lead to the edema of the loose areolar connective tissue layer. So this is called as a caput succedanum and it is temporary and it is going to fade away with the time.